Let there be peace and love among all beings of the universe. Let there be peace. Let there be peace, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Namaskar, Namaskar, welcome. <coughs> to remain in perfect equanimity constantly. <laughs> Having associated with holy persons, attending satsangs, and with understanding all that we see, all objects that can be seen are merely 
concepts, percepts and notions, then the understanding will be not to acquire, not to reject any of these notions. Mountains, rivers, forests remain the same every moment. Yesterday we were speaking, one person was speaking every moment, I am suffering. That person is going to be called in this morning. Every moment I am suffering, moment to moment I am suffering. One has to suffer, constantly one has to suffer, who has not attended the association of a holy person. And with that, all the time for millions of years, there will be no end of suffering. How to end the suffering? Satsang. With which you have a knowledge that all these are notions. And this moment to moment as rock is always a rock. All the moment, moment to moment rock is a rock. And sky is a sky. There is no change. Like this, having understood that all these are notions, there will arise a knowledge as with the dawn of the sun, the mist disappears. Likewise, all the hopes and desires will disappear from you. And you will be left in this state of equanimity. And this is your fundamental nature. How we lost it? Because of desires. I have this today, I will have that tomorrow. This is mine and I belong to someone relationships. These are disturbing. So having come to understand that all these are notions and all these desires and hopes will be burnt like hay into the fire. When the fire of knowledge arises, everything is burnt. Your past, present, future is burnt. And that is called the state of perfect equanimity. And mind you, this is your own fundamental nature. You have never to achieve it, attain it, regain it. Whatever you are going to attain, regain, achieve through any method, any practice, you are going to lose it because it is not natural, it is not eternal, it was not permanent that you got at the end of your desire, at the end of your practice you got it and before that you did not have it. So therefore all the attainments, all the gains will be lost to you. Therefore don't aspire for any gain and when you don't hope for anything, any gain, 
and you have understood all this is a notion all this is a perception and everything that you see is not permanent then the mind will be surely at peace who is disturbing your mind hopes desires mind will be at peace when mind at peace is called no mind and there's no difference between no mind and freedom so freedom is this state of equanimity when there is no mind and no mind is a state minus hopes and desires when these are shunned you return to your own eternal rest this is what is already there you have to you have to have a firm conviction as one has a firm conviction that he is a body before dawn of the knowledge one has a firm conviction i am the body like this only you will have a firm conviction i am not the body i am not the mind not the senses and not the respective objects of the senses then what's left peace love being so it is not difficult at all only you have never heard it because you did not have satsang where is the satsang first of all nowhere in the world <clears throat> there is satsang all destructive movements are going on you see to disturb your mind to give rest to the mind no there is no teacher first of all to tell you to keep quiet who is the teacher wherever you go you go to any ashram go to any center in the west or here in india they will present you number of books isn't it mm-hmm. to go through them and disturb yourself all the more <laughs> and whatever you read surely you have to have a storehouse for it a new storehouse you have to open in your memory because you didn't have that store already there you have a different things and now you are going to store something else and it doesn't make any difference storing articles any kind of articles need some space in the memory so everybody tries to stuff your memory right from your birth your parents also stuff your memory right from the birth itself how introducing you to themselves parentage relationships and to the world and then the teachers also do the same thing the priest tell you you belong to this particular religion and not give you any clue that you are peace yourself you are being yourself nobody tells you you belong to this particular religion and the child doesn't know at that time to what religion he belongs to but then the priest wants another member in his community therefore 
you are again deceived by the by the priest of the religions also and then fear you have to come to my church only not to anybody else's church if you do there is hell and if you do heaven this is the promise if you take away fear from the religion fear where is the religion tell me all the religions give you fear there is no religion without fear this is the only place satsang is the place which frees you of all fears and shows you your actual <coughs> peace and love and beauty instantly instantly not postponements for number of years practice no here now this moment yesterday there was a very interesting talk about moment to moment you know? <laughs> we have and this moment to moment is only time moment to moment is only time all moments will finish when you just look into your own self you just just direct your mind towards your own self and all is over we look to the past we look to farm we look to name the moment we decide to shun name and form we are face to face with that perfect equanimity which is our own no face never to return again to this trouble once again and all that you see in the shape of this samsara all this cycle of birth and death is your own imagination is your own hallucination and it is there this ghost was never there because somehow you have been told here is the ghost and you believe it quietly and there stood the ghost of samsara and the trouble and the sorrow and suffering this can be done away with instantly many have done it the kings have done it very busy people have done it and quite few have done it here every day every day one two people are doing it in this satsang also you are all aware of it simply not believing your notions you know this is how it can be done easily in satsang only <coughs> and satsang is the only place where when you enter into satsang that is a that is a place in which you have no association don't call it an association association when you go alone in the forest also you are associated with someone maybe with animals if not men animals birds and so many other things let alone that even with your own body you are associated even with your mind you are associated in satsang is the only place where you have no association except your own self no association 
And this is the place of quietness. Satsang means place of seclusion. A cave which is within the cavity of your heart. When you come to satsang, don't bring your concept that I am the body. And this is a satsang, you see. <laughs> if you bring bodies in the satsang, you are on the wrong side. Yeah. And very few know the meaning of satsang, and many few, many people do not know how to enter the satsang hall, first of all. I just reflected one story of Saint Kabir. He had a daughter, seven years. Of course, she was naughty. And she asked one day, Papa, 500 people come to you every day. Will they all be enlightened? And Kabir was very innocent saint. He said, of course. Why should they come at four, four o'clock? It is winter. It is winter. Why should they come at all to my place? They all will be enlightened. No, Papa, I don't believe. So tomorrow what she does, she stood outside on the door and whosoever comes, she says, today my Papa has decided to interview you before you enter into the satsang hall. Therefore, please lie down here and I have a very sharp chopper and you lie down on this log of wood. I will chop off your head and present it to my father. If he approves, you will be let in for satsang. This is what he has decided today. <laughs> And they said, no, no, we had simply come here to have his blessing because we had to settle the alliance of our daughter with someone and those people from the boy's side had come and we just wanted his blessing to let this engagement pass through successfully. Other one comes for some court case, yet another one to get rid of some disease or illnesses. See, all these people, with some purpose they were showing. For that reason we have come today and nobody was, <laughs> was agreeing to pass through this test. She stood, a small child, seven year old, stood with a knife in hand and a log of wood. And, and Kabir alone is waiting, poor man, for the satsang. <laughs> and nobody comes. So he himself goes, see what happens. It, is, it may be very cold and people are not here, but I am very happy you don't take care. You are here in June, July, August heat. But everybody was here. This hall was as full as today. And this morning also, now we are getting into December, cooler and cooler every day. <laughs> so he came out and he saw this, Kamali was the name of this girl. What are you doing? He says, Papa, I told you nobody comes here for, <laughs> for satsang and nobody comes here for liberation. Didn't I tell you? So what are you doing? Why this knife in hand? I said, Papa, I tell you, people have been coming from four o'clock as usual, one after the other, in group of twos, threes, fours. And I have been simply telling, please lie down. And this is very sharp chopper in my hand. You will never have pain. 
whole night I had been talking. And none agreed. None agreed. None agreed. And why you have been doing this thing? Who will agree? No, no, Father. Listen, I tell you, if even giving a head, giving a head, one head to satsang, this is very cheap. This is very cheap bargain. Who will not execute this bargain? Just losing one head and getting enlightenment. So I stood and no one entered in. What is this losing head? I was not going to kill them simply. I was not going to kill them. I am daughter of Kabir after all. I am not a butcher. I was just removing their ego. That I am the body. Keeping away, killing their ego outside, you see. And when you bring ego in the satsang, it's not going to work. Keep the ego at the shoe rack outside and see what happens. It is the ego through which you see this samsara, through which you see this period, long period of millions of billions of years is just your ego. Past, present, future is just your ego. Sooner you get rid of this ego, I am not the body. Where all this goes? So this ego, I am so and so, is the only impediment, only hindrance of your freedom. So remove this I am, this concept <laughs> or notion of I am the body. When you come to satsang, one satsang is enough. <laughs> yes. One word, one instruction of the teacher is quite enough to the student because it will enter. This word will enter somewhere not known. Otherwise, everybody says, please repeat again, I have not understood, isn't it, no? This understanding is not needed here in satsang, because what you understand is landing into the memory. And if you have memory, you are in the graveyard. All this what you listen is going into the grave. Come and present yourself to this instant which is not even present, which is not even time. Rise above the time concept. Time is also a notion. Mind and time are same thing. <laughs> so please rise above this notion of time just for one second, one moment and you are free. You have got to do it today or tomorrow. <laughs> you are going to do it because how long you can suffer. Nobody wants illness. Nobody wants illness, you see. This is illness, this disease, this ignorance. This darkness, how long you can live in this darkness? So we have to do something about this thing. We have to get rid of this notion and intentions and ideations what we have found in the past come nude without these things and you are free. <laughs> and this is going to be a satsang, you see.
Cheers. <clears throat> How, please, talk about how could you see intimate relationships. Hmm? You are asking me? Or? <laughs> <laughs> Intimate relationships. I see my intimate relationships intimately. <laughs> intimately. Yeah. Do you understand now? <laughs> Intimately. Yeah. <laughs> Intimately, yes. My relationships intimately. Because all relationships that you have are external relationships, isn't it? External. You tell me any intimate relationship you have, anything, everything external that can be seen, touched, heard, or thought about, you see. These are external relationships, not this intimate relationship is in the core of the heart that is intimate, most intimate, where nobody, it is so secret nobody can see, that is called intimate, <laughs> isn't it? Intimate, secret, where no one can enter, so secret, that is called intimation. Isn't it? In the heart, within the heart, maybe in the emptiness of the heart, there you have your intimate friend. No one else can enter there, you see. And that is your intimate friend. And if you so desire, go and meet him there, intimately. All the external relationships are temporary. So what is temporary cannot be intimate, you see. Intimate relationship is permanent, eternal, does not disappear. So anything that disappears is not intimate. You see for a while, all relationships you may see for a while. Means only in the waking state, maybe in the dream state. Hmm? Not beyond. So you take your intimacy beyond the three states, neither waking, nor dreaming, nor sleeping, beyond that intimacy where no one will look at this intimacy. This, this means intimate relationship. Okay. Is it possible that they not be based on Desire and clinging, yes. They are not based on clinging, not based on desire. Hmm? Whatever you desire, that belongs to the past, not in absolute present. You tell me any anything that you desire, 
you are recalling that person, thing, or idea from the past. That doesn't belong to the intimate present. And what you cling also belongs to the past. What you cling, anything, any person, any idea belongs to the past. <coughs> Tell me, anything, any person, anything, any idea which is here now and doesn't belong to the past, Tell me anything. You're here. Hmm? You're here. No, so don't recall the past. To have intimacy with your eternal friend, which cannot be clung to. Hmm. No clinging. Hmm. What is love? Love is where there is no lover and none beloved. It. It's called love. Yeah. It's called love. Otherwise, if there is a lover and beloved, there is some personal interest. Wherever, wherever there is a lover and beloved, some personal interest is there, isn't it? But love has no interest. Therefore, where there is no lover and no beloved, this is called love. And instantly you can find out, for this instant, you don't have any concept of any lover and any beloved, here and now. Keep them aside and look in between. What is this? In between. Don't cling to lover and don't cling either to the beloved. means no subject, no object, means no past. Lover, beloved is a past story, story of the past, not of this present. So in this moment, you keep them away, don't recall them, means don't recall the name, okay? Just for one instant, don't cling to name. Do you follow? Don't cling to any name whatsoever. Then, where you will go? Where do you arrive? Nowhere. Oh, here is the matter. Here is the intimacy. <laughs> Nowhere. It's already there. Huh? It's already there. What do you say? The intimacy is already there. Already there. Simple, yeah. So only ten inches brick difference. We don't see, we don't meet. Yes. Yes. We don't meet. Yes. Just other side of the wall, we don't speak with people. Neighbors. Yes. Yes. Oh, some people 
we meet because we have been meeting in city. <laughs> so this physical relationship is, is not is not worth. Physical relationship is not. So if there is a relationship, it has to be on this level. <laughs> then we have love and happiness with all beings, not only humans, not only humans. It develops with plants, animals, birds, rocks, mm -hmm. and you can see, mm -hmm. you can see if you respect them, how they react respectfully. Yes. Yes. So I have seen how the trees react, if you love them, you touch them, you kiss them. They respond, everything responds. So Raman, you had several years of uh, yes, association? Yes, yes. Only before that, one of one of the permanent associate, it was Devraj Mutiar, who was a retired yeah. officer, a mm. revenue officer. Yes, yes. So he was permanently living there. Mm. I was not reading paper or something, not interested in politics. Mm. He asked me, which side, which side of Punjab do you live? This side of River Ravi. Uh, on the West Bank. I say, why you ask me? He says, this country is going to be divided. Oh, Raman? 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 No, no. Murdiya. Murdiya. Achha. Whose book is... I agree. All day. Day by day with Raman. Day by day with Raman. Beautiful. My account is there with me. My talk with me. Your name is also there? Huh? Your name is mentioned in that book? Yes, yes. I got that book. Yeah, then you refer. Okay. 46, 1946. 1946, okay, I will go and May 23. I was speaking, he came late. He was noting diary but not telling. When I entered the hall, Mr. Punja, a Punjabi, was already speaking to Bhagawan. Here he speaks. The question under topic was, Bhagawan was speaking to someone, the right the heart, the spiritual heart is on the right side. I have read that, I have read that chapter. Yeah, it is from me. You yeah, have read that chapter. Yes, yes. Yeah, a spiritual heart is different than physical right heart is different. Yeah. Yes, yes. So I asked Bhagavan, why? Why on the right? Or why on the left? Hmm. Why inside and why outside? Why heart is not everywhere? That I objected to Bhagavan. Mm -hmm. And he, I could object the Guru also. Yes. <laughs> May 20, what date is? May 26. May 23, 46. Then diary is 46. 1946. Okay. Mm -hmm. They were good here. Yes, they were David Bhagavan. It's a beautiful book. It's a very beautiful book. Ah, yes, yes. Very beautiful. So he used to do this. So anyway, this is the thing. He complained, this man come asked me, I said, this, this side, it's better you go with your family in, in Lailpur itself. Mm -hmm. It's better you go and look after your family. I said, it was a dream. I had family, wife, children, parents, relations. It was a dream and seeing this man, my dream is over. So he I used to go with Bhagavan as a friend in the evening walk, Walking morning walk, walk. just outside the ashram. Mm -hmm. He would visit the cows and then he would. Lakshmi was alive? Lakshmi was alive, yes. yes. Uh -huh. So he complained to Bhagavan that uh, he's not going, he said. Then on the walk, he, Bhagavan asked me, why don't you go to look after your family? I said, Bhagavan. I was dreaming. In the dream, I had a wife. In the dream, I had children. <clears throat> then, when when you woke me up, everything is finished now. I am awake. No family I had. It was all in a dream. Oh, I see. Just he may used to make jokes also. <laughs> I see. It was a dream. Yes, yes, it was. If it is a dream, why you are afraid of a dream? 
Why don't you be afraid of a green little bird? So again, new new thing I'm getting from him. New thing I got from him. How he is teaching me everything, you see. Achha, then I am not so easy to be tackled also. I said, okay, now, okay, let it be dream or no dream. Now I am attached with your physical form. I can't leave you. Do you know? I sit in the front window because the hall is closed. Window is open. I sit in front all night and perhaps out of 24 hours, one hour I miss you. To go here and there yeah. for my bath and my all. 23 hours I look at you. Oh my God. So I, my eyes are now want only this food to look at you. <laughs> I can't be separated from it. Now he looks at me again, started looking at me. Then he said, very graciously, with full of love, I am with you wherever you are. I got the meaning. What does it mean? It tell me now. Simple word. I am with you wherever you are. What is the meaning? Tell me. I will tell you the meaning, therefore. So if it is only if it is your being, eh? if, if it is your being, then only only being is with you all the time. Spiritually, I am with you. Hmm? Spiritually, I am with you. No, no, no. You? No. I am your soul. I am your being. Wherever you go, you carry, you carry the being. No, no, no. You, Manisha? Part of you. Ah. Oh, I knew, but I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> you knew it. You told yeah. me one day. You told me. Yeah, but when, when I am all the time. Sorry. When you came. From that restaurant, from inside, and you said, I found it, I found it, I found it. Yeah. Uh, oh, I don't know, I, I, my mind is always finished. No, no, it's good not to have the mind, it is out of mind. Oh, yeah, yeah, now I know. Yeah, then, if I am present to myself, you know, that's where you also are. There is only present, conscious. And it's only you, it's only one. Sepasano. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. I am with you always, wherever you go. Now I got the meaning of this thing, you know. <laughs> but you didn't say go, oh, you said ah. Mm -hmm. Ah, you see, whenever everybody is, I am doing this thing. I will do that. I am sick. I am feeling very happy. I am suffering. So this I am, we use, we do not know who this I am is. <laughs> so this he told me, I am is not between you and me. I am is with you wherever you are. <laughs> I will be with you. Huh? I will be with you wherever you huh? are. I will be with you. No, no, no. Again, I will. <laughs> I am. I am. With you. I am. Which I am? I am. I am is different than, than what you are here. That I am, you, that you will be I am, you see. You will be aware. Awareness is I am, no? So you have got nothing to do with the body and the thing. He is taking me out of the farm, attachment to the farm. So even when you sleep, there is no farm, no disciple, no guru. I was speaking yesterday. I am is there. <laughs> I am is always there. Being, you being, the being, the self. The Any self. being also is I am. Huh? First word is I am. Huh? First word is I am. Mm -hmm. 
I am that I am. I am that I am. Which is neither word. I am it. This is word, no? Therefore, it is even the Bible says, I am. Be still. Be still. Absolutely still. Physically, mentally, sensefully, intellectually still. As Kabir said, Chit Thir, Man Thir, Bud Thir, Is Thir Rakshari Rasa. Then, I am. That I am. That I am is not you or you, I am. That means beyond. So you will get rid of I am's and that you will do. And that is everywhere there. So that is everywhere. You cannot leave it. So he, he distracted from him and then he introduced me to that energy, which I cannot get rid of it, nor it can get rid of me. So here I got the meaning and full teaching was completed here. So I bowed down, took the dust of his feet, put it in my pocket, went around thrice, again bowed down, Bless me, please. That was my point. And miracles after miracles happened. I go to Lahore, nobody sitting in the train. I went and asked a tea stall, why this train is empty? It goes to Lailpur, isn't it? Have you not heard these coffers? These Hindus are not traveling, afraid of being killed. Some Hindus are here. They are here sitting next to the break van of the guard and those people who were shouting Allah Akbar with the swords and guns and revolvers. Larkeliya, Askeliya Pakistan, Larkeliya Hindustan and kill the coffers. Now, I have to board the train because I'm coming. Now, how to go? If I sit with the Hindus and they say, this about 20 Hindus are there, five, six women are there, they have to go perhaps to next station and and I don't believe they may be all killed. They pull the chain and kill everybody. Then I thought, everybody is safe with the community, with the own community. So I have to sit with Hindus because I couldn't sit because my, I have home on my this thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If they see home, they will come. They will come. And then ear board, the Muslims don't board the ears, yes, and yes. we Hindus mm-hmm. board the ear yes. also. Mm-hmm. They will look my ear, mm-hmm. and some face also. Yes, they yes. can they find, can, they can find out. Mm-hmm. We can find out. In Punjab, Muslim, mm-hmm. Hindu, same dress, mm-hmm. no? Mm-hmm. But dress is same. But the culture, but even then, culture is on their we, face. we can find out yes. his Hindu and his Muslim. Okay. But then I thought, I will sit. There's no dwesh between. This is political, mm-hmm. political vengeance. I don't have any, anything to do with them. Then this occasion demands that I should not risk myself. I will sit with the Muslims. I have no political reason, mm-hmm. so I will sit with them. I sat with them. Mm-hmm. This train was stopped, they were killed in front of my eyes. Hindus were killed? Yes, all. all they, they lined them up, killed everybody oh, oh, oh. Uh, before my eyes. Oh. Then the train arrives there. And you were, you were safe because you were wrong. I was with the Muslims. Muslims, so they didn't care about you. They didn't care. They didn't. I get on at my station and my locality is purely Hindu and Sikh locality. But we have to pass through Islampura, Muslim country. And all the harsh government, Tangawalas are all Muslims in Pakistan. And then I told him, I want to go to Islampura so that he may not know that you are Hindu. He might know. 
Okay. So I have some baggage also. I couldn't carry on my shoulder. You keep it here and I will go myself. I paid off the Tanga man. He went away under the tree. I kept the luggage. Then I went to my walked another half mile from Islampura to Guru Nanakpura and I gave the bell and my father is not opening my father and mother and again bell and it was only nine o'clock night. Then my father goes up on the shop and see who are you, who are you? I said, can't you hear the voice of your son? <laughs> then he comes down. Oh, it's burning. Punjab is burning. Where have you come? Mm -hmm. Are the trains are working? Mm -hmm. We heard the train tracks, tracks are pulled out. No, no, this is a train. If it is correct, mm -hmm. then I give you railway pass. You take away all the women. Mm -hmm. And your mother and me stay on here. Let the rides cool down. Then you can come, come back. Do you know any person in India, other side? I said, yes, yes, there was one major, he was working with me, now he is posted in Lucknow, mm -hmm. and uh, he is very well known to me in the army, and uh, I can, there's no problem. So, we go away, come to Lucknow now, and everybody was safe.